التحدي في قسم الاستكشاف في المناطق النائية ممكن نسميها أو الفرنتير أريز نسبة كبيرة جدا تحدي جميل يتطلب شجاعة يتطلب إنسان يتقبل الخسارة ولكن عادة تكون هي فرنتيرز تكون هاي ريسك هاي ريوارد يعني العائد منها يكون كبير جدا فالفرنتير فعلا يعني جو العمل في الفرنتير بلوكس او النيو فينشرز شيء شيء جميل وكل جيولوجيا اتوقع انه يحلم يكون جزء منه يعني. The new frontiers of the oil and gas industry stretch beyond the boundaries of a sand-swept land, daring a new generation to realize new paths of purpose. Selma Al-Hajiri is a reservoir engineer her mission is to define the new frontiers for the women of her land. Her success promises opportunities for others. Selma knows only too well that the oil business is a world of harsh extremes, starkly defined by risk and reward where only the toughest men survive. She remains undeterred, daring to take her rightful place in a man's world. في يوم كنت رايحة لمديري وطلبني في اجتماع في أثناء الاجتماع كنت ناقش أحد المشاريع. وكان في يعني بعض المشاكل في المشروع ففريدريك قال لي انا اريدك انت تطلعين تشوفين شو اللي صاير في في البروجكت والبروجكت في في تايلند want you to drive the thinking around how we we think in terms of redeveloping jasmine and bringing forward those incremental reserves sure but is the main objective is to go and check the production test results Selma packs her bags in preparation for life on an oil rig in the Gulf of Thailand. The challenges are looming. The biggest one is more immediate. Selma has to inform her mother that she is leaving her home and family to work on an offshore oil rig. فأنا لما قلت لها في البداية هي كانت تتوقع أن أنا أمزح أقولها أن أنا رايحة تايلند وبشتغل هناك ظنت أنها مزحة وبعدين لما شافت أن أنا أتكلم جد زعلت شوي وبعدين رجعت مرة ثانية يعني قالت يعني إذا هالشيء يعني بيكون سبب في نجاحك وسبب في تطورك المهني وفي في وصولك لدرجات أفضل ومواقع أفضل uh, الله يوفقك وانا معاك يعني انا معاك في مسيرتك المهنيه لحد ما توصلين اللي تريدينه لحد ما تحققين اهدافك وان شاء الله تتعلمون شيء تفيدوا النفس انكم وطنكم وشيوخكم ان شاء الله اللي صرفوا عليكم وما قصروا فيكم وهذا وطنكم لازم ترفعون راس وطنكم وتسوون له طاري عدل وان شاء الله هي مش محتاجه شيء منكم ان شاء الله دوم طريا على الامارات Selma grew up in Alain, in a remote and isolated region called Suihan. Her family lived in a tent, in the desolate sands, with little access to the amenities of modern life or the advances of modern medicine. كانت العناية الصحية يعني متواضعة في هذه الفترة فأنا ال ال فاتني اللي هو تطعيم تطعيم ضد شلل الأطفال. وحصل اني جتني الحمى شوكيه واثرت علي فهذا الشيء يعني سبب لي اللي هو الشلل المزمن يعني اللي شوي اثر على حركتي After years of exhausting treatment and operations 
Selma began to walk again. طبعا الامور السيئه او الامور الغير متوقعه اللي لها يعني سلبيات عليك او ممكن تضرك اذا في مجال اني اغيره لشيء ايجابي او اني اغيره لشيء لصالحي بعمل وبجتهد لاني اغيره Determination and the will to survive run deep in the veins of her Bedouin forefathers. Selma's uncle, Nasser bin Sahmi al Hajr, still remembers eking out a living in the sun battered sands before the discovery of oil. <laughs> Selma's uncle watched the first oil drillers punching holes into the barren wastelands of Abu Dhabi. They drilled wells until they tapped into what turned out to be an enormous ocean of oil. A life of simplicity and poverty suddenly became one of privileges and wealth. Within a few years, they shipped out millions of tons of petroleum worth tens of millions of dollars. في حقول من من سنة 1958 و 1960 و Adnan reads rocks. It is his passion and hobby. In the rocks are the clues that help him detect and determine the extent of hydrocarbon deposits beneath the Earth's surface. وجودي في في مكان نفس هذا الوادي اللي هو وادي الرحبة يعطيك شعور ب بضحالة المعلومات اللي اللي حاليا متوفرة عندي. الإنسان وتحس إنه لازم لازم تشتغل أكثر لازم تدرس أكثر لازم تجتهد أكثر على أساس إنك أنت ممكن تقرب للصورة الحقيقية لخصائص ومعرفة الصخور هذه بطريقة مقربة جدا. The story of geology is the story of the earth. To understand history is to foresee the future. Its secrets lie written in the color, the shape, the streaks. And patterns in the rocks. في الجيولوجيا ما في إجابة واحدة دائما تكون الإجابات إجابات متعددة لأن لأن يختلف من شخص إلى شخص من خبرة إلى خبرة أخرى. We have two D. We can at least locate them. If you think the depth conversion might improve the quality of the seismic, why not? Yeah. I think we can try a different. Yeah. The hunt for oil demands the team peers deep beneath the surface of the Earth, pushing the frontiers of imaging technology. Adnan now leads the new exploration activities, searching beneath the water and rocks in Thailand. These are the new frontiers, and this is where Selma is heading. She arrives in the tropical metropolis of Bangkok, to discover a labyrinth of sprawling expressways and crowded streets carrying over five million vehicles, all demanding oil. Each time I come to Bangkok, I find something in you, so as if it is my first time to Bangkok. When I go outside, I just feel I'm in the middle of uh, people living their daily life and uh, 
they are um, uh, enjoying their life. They are cooking in the streets, uh, the laughing, talking. The, the people here are very friendly and very polite. People here are different than uh, our people in the Middle East. They are, um, uh, I mean, in terms of the culture and in terms of uh, the, the way they talk to others. They are very kind, very polite, and uh, they have certain uh, things related to their culture where we should respect and we should uh, always deal with them based on, based on this. From my experience uh, with them, they are um, they are very kind, but they are uh, hardworking. It is important that Selma gains knowledge of all aspects of the operation in Thailand. Hi, Selma. Thank you. Hi, nice to see you. I'm good. Thank you. Good to see you. I'm good. Thank you. And the woman can get to any place, whether it was in this country or outside the country. We're going to talk about this. 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 We're most of the beautiful corals of her childhood had died. In the next 50 years, more than 90% of the coral reef in the world will be at risk. So it means that it will be gone. So it's very scary if we not do something about the climate change. When the corals are heat stressed, they eject the algae living inside the tissue. Once the algae depart, the coral whitens or bleaches. Sustained bleaching will trigger the partial or total death of the coral reef. Well, I think everything has never been too late. Uh, if we know now that, okay, uh, coral is going to die, never too late for us to start. If we realize it, that we have to save or do something. Apple headed a small team that believed they could achieve coral restoration through sexual reproduction. Apple assessed that the coral spawning event would happen at the changing of the full moon. Night after night, the team had to search for the elusive, microscopic coral larvae. 
But the spawning event never happened. It was more unpredictable than she ever imagined. Most of the coral um, in Thailand, also in the world, they spawn once a year and they spawn at night. So if you miss it that year, it means that you have to start again. Apple eventually managed to collect the coral larvae and bring it back to her makeshift hatchery. But the first batch of baby coral died within days. In that time, we're very disappointed. But uh, we think that, well, it's the first year and we're not going to give up. Uh, we will try the next following year. They were to face failure again, this time due to lack of funds. Baby coral in the hatchery need continuous water flow. An insufficient electricity supply meant the team provided the growing babies with only three to four hours of flowing water a day. It was not enough, and they died. As a scientist, we are curious about, well, how are we going to solve the problem? If we have the problem, we have to solve it, right? So we not really feel any, you know, um, disappointed or, you know, give up. Uh, we fight every, every year. A chance for the coral survival came in the form of a small donation from Mubadala Petroleum. When a solar cell was activated, 24 hours of water was circulated to the hatchery. We could see a difference now that coral this year grow a little bit better and the survival rate is much better than the previous year because of the water system um, better than before. Apple raised the coral babies in the hatchery and then replanted them on the ocean floor where they would flourish and grow into a life-giving reef. We found that all baby coral that we transferred them um, back to the reef and now they are five years old coral. They're not baby anymore. They already become a mature coral and they can be able to produce egg and sperm. Yes, now I, I become a grandmother now. <laughs> it's never be too late to uh, do something or to save uh, the nature or save the world. The question remains, how do we balance security, economic growth, and environmental needs? And if we do not take action now, who will ultimately pay the price? Maurizio Linoche, CEO of Mubadala Petroleum, hastily moves through the streets of London. He is about to take his place amongst the most influential decision makers at the Oil and Money Conference. I have to say, having been in the Middle East for the last 20 years, I've seen uh, phenomenal changes, and, and many of them for, for the better. Executives from across the world are here to discuss the energy mix, oil prices, opportunities, exploration, and production. Mubadala Petroleum, uh, uh, we're one of the youngest uh, companies uh, on the block. Uh, I have to say that five or six years ago, we didn't exist. Uh, today, it's a company that counts uh, a production of around 400,000 barrels a day. Uh, we have operations in 12 countries, uh, around eight, 800 people. The curtain has risen on Maurizio and his agile young energetic company, a new player in a hostile world of high risk and high reward. I realized early on in my life that you know, I want to be part of the energy sector, primarily because I thought that there is, if there is something that the world will continue to, to be thirsty for and need of is energy. Maurizio was born in Italy. He has spent 25 years at the heart of the energy industry in the Middle East. In between a world of global conferences, presentations, multi-billion dollar deals and projects, 
Maurizio drops into Milan to check on his father's health and reminisce about the good old days before he struck oil or oil struck him. Mario Lenoce is proud of his only son, who worked hard and rose from a humble upbringing to build one of the most important companies in Abu Dhabi. Very smart. Thank you. More than father, the beauty man. <laughs> yes. As a young boy, Maurizio pursued a career as a professional soccer player, but he soon abandoned that dream. Instead, he started to explore the new frontiers of energy. I started my careers in uh, renewables, actually. And, and so I know that the future of, of the world is, lies on renewable energy. Hydrocarbons is just a passage. The age of oil and hydrocarbons began in 1859, when a cry of delight echoed through a narrow valley in western Pennsylvania. Colonel Drake, an eccentric American, had just struck oil that fine day. This event signaled the great oil rush. The development of the internal combustion engine soon followed. It gave oil a new market and a new generation was born. Oil drove the great post-war suburbanization movement and transformed our lives. It soon determined how we lived and how we moved. Oil became the lifeblood of our nations. The problem with oil is not how to run our cars. Detroit knows how to run cars in other ways than gasoline. All right, that, they've known that for a long time. The, the, our glasses that you and I are wearing, this is petrochemical. How does a solar panel create this? That's gonna be the real problem. Oil was an essential component in fertilizer. It transported food to megacities. It provided plastics and chemicals, fueling the global struggle for economic and political primacy. It's everywhere. It's what have uh, made the world uh, what it is today, what has fueled the growth, made a better life for billions. Even today, energy dominates the agendas of nations. Overcoming traditional boundaries and pushing into new ways of thinking is key. Seven billion people are burning fossil fuels for energy. Gigatons of man-made carbon dioxide are pumping into the atmosphere every day, threatening large-scale disruptions in climate with disastrous consequences. A warming world will threaten food supplies. Eventually, no population will be insulated from the huge changes in food production that the rest of the century will bring. This means that oil companies need to be aware of the new implications and take more responsibility. They must now analyze their operation in terms of benefits to the living world and the communities they operate in. Puye Dayan is the head of Mu Ten village. For most of his life, he made his living as a fisherman. Three decades ago, he noticed that the precious mangrove forest that protected the coastline and provided an essential marine breeding ground had been destroyed. Together, the villagers planted mangrove trees in the empty spaces. Slowly, the project took root, and vital forests began to flourish, creating and nurturing life once again. But the mangrove forest promised to bear even greater value to the next generation. The newly grown trees appeared to be reducing the temperatures. The trees absorb heat and release oxygen by creating cooler shadowed areas. 
In this way, the forest was reducing global warming. ทางเดินที่จริงๆแล้วเนี่ยนะในไอเดียผมเนี่ยผมอยากสร้างเป็นสะพานไม้ไผ่ซึ่งทีแรกๆเนี่ยที่เราทำก็คือปัญหาเราไม่มีต้นทุนเราก็ใช้สตางค์ของเราเองบ้างส่วนใหญ่ที่แรกจะใช้สตางค์ในกระเป๋าเราเองนะเป็นส่วนใหญ่เราก็เอาชาวบ้านมาร่วมด้วยช่วยกันทำ When Mubadala Petroleum invested in this community project and funded the construction of a 500 meter walkway and planted four acres of mangrove forest, Puye Dayan's dream to restore the damaged coastline forest had taken root and grown green and strong. Diamond. Um, is that that before doing this, he just like normal human being that his happiness was gaining everything, money, everything that he could ever have. But then you know, he said that when you die, you cannot take anything. But what you do here, what you live, live for people for the, in the next generation, that is his happiness. There are questions, but there is the search for the answers that will touch the lives of the generations to come. It carries only the promise of a future, a future driven by increasing demand and a new set of responsibilities and environmental challenges. A new generation of courageous Emiratis now stands on the edge of the new frontiers. The frontiers shaped and etched in their open minds and their willing hearts. They both know it is about yesterday and what we learned. It is about tomorrow and what we still have to learn. Because the future never ceases to be the new frontier we are searching for.